Okay. Shallow cast. Okay. Is it working? Oh, okay. Ah. The audio thing. My goodness. Sorry. I spent so much time trying to make sure everything was set up correctly. And then apparently I did not test my audio. All right. No, we're good. We're good. That's what happens when I change where a thing is plugged in on my computer. Then I have to reassign the input device and all the things. And <sighs> yeah, anyway, here we are on Monday night. <laughs> and uh, thank you for joining me. My name is Lavelle Ingram. We are on Paint Fumes live stream where I've been working on a mixed media painting. This is part of an art series that I have been working on for about, um, well, like over a year, I'd say. So yes, I've got everything set up and what needs to be done. Hello, Aeroset. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Thank you for joining. Um, I started a transfer print last last time in the last stream. So today, one of the first things I'll be doing is exposing that. Um, I don't really have many corners that I can tear off. I'm sort of checking right now. If I can do that, that helps a little bit, but otherwise I'm just gonna have to use water and soak it and kind of gently rub it, hence my handy rag at the ready. But that's, yep, yeah, this, this is something that I have to be a little bit careful with, especially when I'm working on watercolor paper because it always hits a point where it tolerates so much abuse and then it's just gonna start Kind of falling apart on him. So I said it right, yay! <laughs> the oh, the wine bucket. Yes, I might have. To, I'll have to go get it. It is in another room. Um, although I think I might actually move it to the studio. It seems like a more appropriate place. But one thing I can show that I love that I just added to my studio is this amazing little planter. See the lights it's hitting it just right it's like this creepy sort of cement baby doll and i got this some awesome little cactus to put in there try to turn it without having anything come out so it shows up a little bit in the lighting <laughs> i love this thing it's so weird it was a gift like a year ago when i finally got a little plant to put in it and dirt and then did the thing so I have been killing every plant in my place. It is, yeah, it's definitely qualifies as creepy. Yes. And I do too. I have a very soft spot for creepy things. And then another plant that I'm trying to not kill. I have this pot as well. Um, it was kind of fun. And I had somebody gave me these cuttings of their spider plant. And I've had it for a while and it's been not doing well. So... I put it in different dirt, put it in this pot because I thought that'd be fun for hair. And fingers crossed that I don't kill it along with everything else that I have killed so far. I'm a very bad plant mother. Have I seen Guillermo de Toro's house? I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it. I've heard him talk about it on a podcast and uh, it sounds amazing. It's quite the collector of things, it sounds like. Just learning how to keep my one plant alive. I love your plant pots. And that's uh, the one was a gift. The other one I picked up at this place that sells, uh, I guess, Amazon returns. And it's the, the store is a hot mess. So I, this is a little water bottle. I'm just spraying some water on the paper there to try to really soak it. Um, but I went there on a day where everything in the store, I had no idea what the place was. Everything in the store was three dollars that day I think and so I got that little that weird little lady pot and I didn't even know it was in a box and it just said head pot plant pot so I'm like this sounds like something I need to have so I brought it home <laughs> all right I'm gonna let this sop in there a little bit kind of see that print showing through a little 
and I, you could kind of tell where it's wet and where it isn't. I think I can actually, I'll zoom in a little bit. As long as I'm mostly working this one area. So it's clear, oh, clear. Yes, yeah, so last stream, I did, I started doing what I call, what i calling a transfer print. I think that's, I think that's the correct term. Um, I have a laser printer at home. So if you have a laser printer, you can do this. Um, you print out the image that you want and you have to, you use a, like a gloss medium, an acrylic gloss medium to play it, pl place it down, let it dry really well. And then you can take the paper away. What did I use for the beautiful portrait on the right? Okay, this I used a source from Unsplash. They have really nice um, royalty, not just royalty free, but public domain photos. So photographers will load um, images that they do. Maybe it's something from a photo shoot that they didn't end up using. And it, it serves multiple purposes. It provides creators with some imagery to use that you don't have to worry about the rights on and it also lets them like kind of you know get their name out there i would love to eventually be able to hire my own models and take my own uh, reference photos so i'm very very gently pulling up the paper as it's wet and softens, I can do that. It's just a matter of trying not to destroy the paper underneath it to the, <clears throat> the layer of medium that I put down should help protect it. But what was I talking about now? Oh, upsplash, unsplash. Yeah, really nice resource online. I've used myself for, I'm, you know, I'm the only model I've got around here. Um, so I've, I have used myself before, but that gets a little old and it always feels very awkward. Very, very, very awkward. <laughs> so yeah, I try to find, and even when I use those, uh, I try to change them up a bit. Um, I changed her features a little bit. I changed her hair. Um, so I, you know, making some adjustments like that so it's not super clear cut rendition. Yeah, you know, Unsplash, yep. Uh, this is with, the, the part with her was primarily watercolor uh, over pencil drawing. And I have drawn some um, flowers here that I'm going to ink. That'll be part of continuing the work on this. I'd use yeah, <laughs> one day get those models. I'd use myself for poses, but I'm <laughs> AF. I don't think it's a bad thing, but can't see my anatomies accurately when I try to do body poses. Everybody is gorgeous. Every single body is amazing. I think you just sort of, uh, we, we are, of course, always our own worst critics of ourselves and our own body dysmorphia stuff. There's no doubt about that. But yeah, otherwise it's just finding interesting sources online where you're not breaking any <laughs> laws or anything for using it. That being the goal. And of course, something that I had written down is, uh, to talk about today is that uh, there was just a Supreme Court case. Um, decided this last week that was this photographer against the Andy Warhol fa Foundation and he was suing them because while well, he was still alive Andy Warhol used his imagery like a picture that he took of Prince the musician Prince um, and Andy Warhol had used it to create a series of paintings of Prince and he, he did change, obviously it's a very different style from black and white photography uh, when 
Andy Warhol was making is very pop art and he also slightly changed the expression on his face but the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the photographer that it was derivative and not allowed so that's something very interesting for any of us artists that use any kind of found resources for poses and reference um, even doing portraits of people like I've done quite a few portraits over the over the last few years so just something to keep it that we'll have to keep in mind going forward um, yeah that's pretty crazy so it was a Warhol style portrait of this person's face found in favor of the person yeah it was uh it was Prince was the portrait subject but it was the photographer who took the portrait of Prince uh, that was suing so I think he got a pretty fair compensation and of course I don't the the foundation won't be able to then sell that artwork anymore unless they come up with some kind of agreement in terms of any prints or anything else they, they might have had it on so yeah very interesting like I did a portrait on stream earlier this year that was a David Bowie portrait and I wasn't doing it to sell it I was just doing it as a um, as an just a thing to do and <laughs> uh, I know I was using a very famous picture of David Bowie and I'm not worried about it because I'm not monetizing it in any way but that would be the kind of thing that you'd really have to be careful about here yeah uh, oh come to Australia heck yeah <laughs> there's some crazy stuff going on in the States these days I tell you it is a strange place to be sometimes this is a weird little process I'm court kind of just gently working away little bits and layers of paper the printer paper that was there trying to get rid of those rough edges and then it looks like this was it almost looks like this was printed on the paper then when they were done so it's coming along we're getting there yeah, U.S. politics is a ride. Um, I am in Illinois, which in a lot of ways I feel pretty lucky about because um, I don't know that it would be a big surprise to anybody if they've followed any of my work at all that I am pretty left-leaning. Um, so the state of Illinois has enshrined women's rights. Um, for the most part they're very very interested in maintaining human rights and such so I feel good about that in terms of where I am but I don't feel good about it in the sense of there's so many there are so many women in the country that are in places that is really under attack not just women but my god the stuff going on now against like trans folks is just crazy and awful women's rights just all this crazy crazy stuff it's upsetting to see it happen and it's upsetting to have it be here okay ah thank you I think I've just about got this there's just a few little little bits but I think I've got it pretty well exposed here and this one turned out pretty good. I much earlier stream, I think back in March, I did a, a quick transfer print thing and it did not turn out this well. <laughs> yeah, Illinois is holding on there. Um, few states are. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. No worries. I, I, you get me going on topics. I have big time soapbox issues that I could go off about. Art is something I can talk a lot about too. Just, I just love 
creativity, what everybody, anybody is doing. So cool and so fascinating. I love to follow. So I think, trying to look at an angle to see <laughs> if I'm missing anything. Uh, it's pretty good. Whoops. Set my clip line. The reason I have it clipped is because this is on a watercolor block, but the more you work the paper over time, it starts to peel away from the block. So that clip is just to hold that part down. Not still working. All right. So that part is done. So I'm going to pull the camera back again. I'm going to watch my screen here, make sure I got it right. There we go. All right. I think that's pretty good. Um, the oh, the watercolor block. It's like uh, it's like a pad of paper, pad of watercolor paper, and it's all instead of being bound on one side, it's bound on two or three sides. So it becomes like you're working on a solid block, and then when you're done painting, you would just take a little blade like an exacto, and then you can cut around and then lift your piece up, piece of paper up, and there's a clean one underneath. Um, so they call that a block. It's uh, this one is only on two sides, so I definitely have like the bottom and top are open, and, and then on the edges it will it starts to peel away because I'm putting this paper through a measure doing this kind of work on here. Um, but it's nice because then I don't have to, otherwise I would have a sheet and I would tape it down. Um, and that's another way to work as well. But yeah, by having the block, I can move it around and I can have a few different things going at the same time. So it's kind of hand, handy. Um, I have had to definitely watch my news consumption I have gone down some serious doom spirals and it's not healthy <laughs> and everything's awful all the time. It isn't good to just be engrossed in it and it just puts you in this like fear mindset and that's never a happy, healthy place to be. So I, yeah, I've had to, I have to watch myself for sure. All right, my next thing. is the, this kind of snake thing that I put on here last week. I'm going to continue the pattern that I've started here and take that all the way up on here. So that should mark a flow in here. So that will take a few minutes to do. But kind of today is sort of like mostly the detail stuff. Everything's in good shape on here. That's why channels like yours and doing streams makes a big difference to me. Space of goodness and creative activity and kindness. Oh yes, thank you for saying that. I yeah, that's what I that's what I definitely want. I hope for like some shared inspiration and just chatting and creative time. Like I kinda like to think of it as like a co-working se session. Like you don't you can have your own projects going on while I'm working or just hang out and watch just just to hang out and art art hangouts are always the best hangouts getting some weird shapes here but that's fine <laughs> I'm not a stickler for perfection definitely not Ooh, I finally got new lights in here. Um, if you've seen any of my other streams or videos, there's been a lot of, or especially recently, there's been some yellow light going on because the lamps that I recently bought with my, when I kind of changed things up in my studio were all very warm bulbs and I knew I needed to replace them and I just wasn't getting it done. Finally did it because I was looking at video that I was taking and it's like, oh, this just looks so awful. So <laughs> I had to, I'm finally like, just go to the store and buy some light bulbs. This is terrible. 
I suffer a mental illness that stops me from doing general outside social stuff. So it makes it, me feel productive and inspired to see you do it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, social anxiety and anxiety and all that stuff. It's real. But we all still need some kind of connection, right? In whatever safe way we can make it happen that we're comfortable with. So yeah, I'm glad to have a safe space. Changing colors on a canvas, absolutely it does. <laughs> yeah, I have a, a nice daylight lamp that's like a recording studio type, like a photography studio lamp that's up over where my camera is um, and that helps a little bit for when I'm working over here but I definitely needed to have stuff for when I'm working at the easel behind me too and just everywhere anywhere else like gotta be able to see the colors that's kind of a major major detail it's like uh, there's a kid in one of my classes that I teach in the e a couple evenings who is always like, can we turn the lights down? It's like, I, I appreciate what, you, what you're thinking and what you're asking, but we, we can't do that. We have to be able to see what we're doing. We're making art. <laughs> Need to be able to see those colors. I can certainly understand though, the irritation that super bright lights can have, but there are certain places where you kind of need it. I have a, oh, I have a story I saw from another video I saw recently. Might be a paragraph. Can I share? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I kept meaning to get to, um, what's it called? Costco has really good deal for some light bulbs that were the right, uh, the correct Kelvins um, to be daylight and good for color. But I wasn't getting that done, so I just went to the closest, I guess it was a Target I ended up at, to get my bulbs, just just have them, and oh my gosh, what a difference, like immediately. Some of those things, really, it's kind of amazing. Good light for, for making art and recording both. <laughs> There's little details that sometimes you just overlook for convenience sake or whatever else. More things to spend money on. So here, talking about color, an artist working at his studio when he was on his PC and working colors and they came out beautifully. Then he sent them to his boss who said, well, what's up with the colors? Uh-oh. Is that a, uh, bad monitor issue. She sent it back, told him to revise, so he did, but still felt it was good and sent it back again. Oh boy. <laughs> this can't end well. If your monitor isn't showing something right or you have a weird setting she's like dude something is going on what the hell it's way oversaturated and doesn't have balance I have to come see it on your screen oh yeah yeah I've had something like that happen before where it was somebody else that had a really jacked up monitor and they didn't understand what I was sending them <laughs> But I'm curious to hear this outcome. And I'm gonna grab my cup of pens. Next, I will do some inking here. She comes over and assesses the situation because his monitors are all good. She steps back and turns around. The wall behind him was painted red. Oh, <laughs> wow, who would have thought? 
She had to get it repainted a neutral gray so he could work. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that would do it, wouldn't it? Oh my. <laughs> it's no good. And yeah, the colors around you. Um, I wondered if I would regret painting that one wall behind me purple, but thus far <laughs> I said, haven't had that kind of issue. Um, I know it doesn't necessarily present the artwork the best, but I just have a hard time. Like the other walls in here are still white, but I just, I love color. I want color. <laughs> so eh, whatever. But yeah, that's, ooh, that's rough. Those warm shades, I think, are especially difficult for, uh, yeah, reds, oranges, yellows. That can do terrible things. Greens, too, of course. So now, I guess I can zoom in on this area again, this kind of small area. I'm working on inking these flowers that I've drawn in here. And I'm using a 0.05 micron, it's not a micron, it's a derwent, derwent, der der <laughs> oh my, um, marker. I really like these, but it's basically like the microns that you can get around here. I had one of these and I didn't have any idea where it came from and I had to look it up online and try to, and I ended up having to order it from like Sweden or something and I think it might have been because it was like around pandemic time but um, yeah it was kind of crazy trying to get a hold of them at once. I'd be surprised how often I see it now in other digital artists on YouTube. They have bright colors on their studio walls. It makes total sense. Yeah it's true and, and lighting again too if your lights are too yellow and you compensate your when you're painting to make it look good it look might look great in your studio and the minute you take it outside it'll be very cool and blue much more than you realized it was going to be i've seen that sort of thing happen too so i've definitely been like knowing that that's a possibility i've been concerned about getting these things changed <laughs> Ooh, finally finally get it done just goes on that list of to-dos that's always forever long and it gets ignored and pushed back. So on her, I have drawn some chamomile flowers and some uh, white lotus flowers. They both are symbols of protection. So that's why I chose them for this piece. Yeah, I don't, I don't really even remember where I got the first um, Derwent pen I've ever, that I remember using, but once it died, I'm like, I need more of these. And around here, it's all my crowns at the art store. Oh, chamomile tea right now. Cheers indeed. <laughs> I thought about making tea, but my teapot was not near me and then I was lazy, so I, I didn't get it done. And it was really this year, having gotten sick, that made me start to be a tea drinker because I never really drank a whole lot of tea. Outside of maybe like, a, I went through phases where I drank a lot of iced tea. But earlier this year, got super sick and I drank my body's weight in tea by the time it was over and now I enjoy it. <laughs> I think I had been brewing it long, wrong for my whole life. Pretty sure I just throw the tea bag in the hot water and let it sit there forever and ever. And that did not make for a tasty cup. But otherwise, I am all about the coffee. All day, every day. Give me the coffee. It's terrible. 
<laughs> but I love it. When I was a kid, I drank so much soda. And I suspect that there was a little bit of a kind of a self-medicating thing going on there because between the sugar and the caffeine, it was a lot of stimul stimulant in that. Um, so yeah, it definitely was, I haven't had a soda now in probably 14 years, so I'm not sure that I could tolerate it at all. I don't think it's so, so sweet. Yeah, and I think that, you know, if coffee is a vice, it's one of the least, ter less, less terrible ones to have. Or at least I can tell myself that. <laughs> the stories we tell. I just really, really enjoy, really, really enjoy coffee. Lesser of the evils indeed. I'm also kind of trying to um, recognize what the heck I was drawing last week and make sense of my drawing. <laughs> it's not quite as bad as uh, my handwriting, which is really terrible. I can rarely ever read what I wrote after the fact, especially if I wrote it quickly. But uh, yeah trying to figure out what exactly it was that I was going for there. A little bit of a challenge. I can definitely see some of these leaves. Once I do this, I'll have to decide if I want to add any color to these or just leave them as the outlines. This is a very fine pointed pen, so let's see if I'm satisfied with how light the lines are. I don't think this pen really loves this paper. Oh, making it work. I don't know what I drew right there. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe? I think that it's a leaf with a folded over edge. I think that's what I think that's what it was. We'll go with that. I don't know. Is it a fine liner? Yeah, it's a 0.05. So very fine line, and I no, I, I have a point oh eight, but it apparently is not in the in the studio with me at the moment. So this is fine. I do have a brush as well, a brush pen. I could fill in some heavy lines with that too. We'll see. We'll start with this. It's the kind of thing I can always make adjustments to as I go if I decide to change it up. Sometimes you gotta kind of just see it in the end to decide if if it works or not. Give it an opportunity. I suppose it's possible that I'm running low on ink in there too, maybe. 
Okay, I hope it looks from it. I'll have to like zoom out and get a really good look at it when, when it's all done. Maybe erase out my pencil lines and see if it's still, I feel like I'm kind of losing it there. Yeah, it's kind of dying on me. Do I have another one? Where are you? Ooh, another row five. This one is a Prismacolor. I <laughs> have all the, all the random things. I have a 005 here too. That will definitely be a little much, so we're not going with that one. <laughs> I'll pull out my brush pen here. I think it's just, yeah, just a black brush pen. Might use that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the suspicious slapping sound of the back. And this mic is crazy. I'm surprised I picked that up. That is um, my partner um, opening a pack of cigarettes. He's, it smokes. I do not. Um, but that's that was what you were hearing there. I can't believe I picked that up from the other room with a door shut here. Well, it had been shut. It looks like my cat pushed it open. Surprised he didn't say anything when he did it. He he usually announces himself when he comes in the studio or he sees that I'm streaming. He's like, oh, that's boring. And then he turns around. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, not a great habit either. <laughs> it's funny, though. Uh, once you mention that, uh, that makes me laugh. Okay, this pen is working much better. I will have to maybe reorder some some of my Dewart pens or else I just need to scour all of my bags in the house cuz I stash things like that in like these and pencils in drawers and bags and purses so that I just always have things around me. If I choose to like draw or sketch or something wherever I am, I want to be prepared. So it's very likely I have a whole bunch of them just spread out all over the place. Okay, that is better. I think I'm casting a little bit of a shadow when I'm drawing the lines. So I'm trying to hold my pen at a bit of an angle here. There. Let's <laughs> see if that helps at all. He's white. Uh, white jasmine. It's white jasmine flowers. That's what they are. They have itty bitty little leaves. At least the ones that I was, no, it's the chamomile flowers that have the itty bitty leaves. The tiny, tiny little leaves. So, get a few of those off to the side here. Somehow I can't. I, I did the same thing when I was searching the images. I started typing in lotus, and I don't know why I was thinking lotus, but my brain has a tendency to cross a lot of wires very easily. Which always throws me off. I've always called it artist brain. And then many years later, I discovered I had ADHD. Go figure. <laughs> That's exactly what it always was. I remember talking about, like, that would be my, um, in job interviews, what's your weakness or whatever, that question, that stereotypical question you get. I would always say that it was my artist brain, which makes it hard for me to stay organized and I'm forgetful. So I have to do things to 
try to stay on top of details and that was you know the truth and I have always been very bad with details and staying on top of things oh it's never gotten better oh well Goes to Pinterest for reference, emerges three hours later after finishing a YouTube video on a woman doing makeup and talking serial killers. <laughs> rabbit holes, yes. Yes, indeed. Starn rabbit holes. Oh, man. Yeah, it's brutal sometimes. Even this morning I was struggling with, I went to like actually do some work and then I started researching uh, camera lenses um, and how to pick foundation conceal or concealer color and then something else that I don't even remember now, but it was just, it's just like ping ponging around and constantly having to correct yourself to get anything finished. My own worst enemy. And then when you do that, then you always feel like it takes you forever to accomplish things because the brain's never entirely in the right place for stuff. You always feel guilty. I always, I always feel guilty about ever taking a break. So time to unwind, even though like I understand how important it is and want to do so. It definitely makes things difficult. think about other rabbit holes I've gone down recently. One that I've been meaning, something I keep meaning to look up, is what kind of saw is a good thing to have, is a good saw to have if you live in a condo or an apartment where you don't have a garage. Because, just because. <laughs> I think our culture is so driven on the idea our time should always be productive. It's, yeah. I think it's part of the introduction of the internet and the expectation to always be on and just also to like capitalism must always be making money to live you want to live make money all the time so there's yeah all those things I loved woodworking videos and enjoyed getting sucked into that really easy. Yes. Yeah. Videos of anybody making anything, especially if there's like, you know, nice music or something. <laughs> Just really get sucked down those rabbit holes so easily. It's like soothing and inspiring. And then I, and then watching somebody make something makes me think, Ooh, I wonder if I could make that. And you start looking that up. <laughs> And start budgeting for all the supplies it might need and then you maybe you buy them and maybe you never use them i'm not i swear i'm not talking from experience at all <laughs> ah yes the good times all right there are lines that are from the painting not from not from the flowers, okay. So I think I know where I am still. I actually had woodworking class in college. It was part of a foundations program at my, 
art school and I loved it. We got to learn how to use all the wood shop tools. It was great. I always get really excited about the projects and I would always really screw them up and never <laughs> had anything. Like, I think I barely passed that class. And it wasn't for lack of trying. But that was a long time ago. And I always think, I'd like to try my hand at those things again one day. One day, one day. There is a wood shop, like a community wood sh woodworking shop where I live. Um, it's run by like senior center volunteers. So I think you would just have to pay some money to, and it's not much, to do their little, their like safety walkthrough with them and then And then I think you can just use, like, maybe pay a small uh, amount for admission to go into there and just use all the stuff one day. Because another rabbit hole I went down a few months, a couple months ago, I spent, like, hours, how can I build my own headboard? And it was totally out of the blue, and I'm like, I must learn how to do this, because I think I can do it, and I should do it. <laughs> but it's that kind of thing. You know, you know, it actually would be handy if I could build my own frames. That would be nice. It would be cool to see what you'd make if you get the opportunity to do woodworking. Oh man, I'd probably make a mess, <laughs> most likely. But yeah, I'd love, I would love to. It's like uh, my another most recent thing has been that I wanted to sew. I have a sewing machine that was given to me as a gift nearly 20 years ago now. Nearly 20 years ago now. And I never once learned how to thread it correctly. So I'm like, I thought about getting rid of it a bunch of times or giving it away. And then just recently I'm like, you know what? I should just make some of my own shirts. <laughs> so through the library there, we have a maker space at our local library. I was able to take this class that taught you how to make a very basic, uh, like a tote bag with a sewing machine. So I did, I did that. And then I'm like, yes, I think I can do this. And I, meant to go buy fabric and I finally went and did it uh, a few weeks ago and that bag of fabric is sitting over there in my studio right in here um, haven't done a thing with it yet <sighs> yep but one of these days one of these days We're getting there. I'm gonna turn this guy sideways for a second to finish off this side. I try to see what I'm doing still. Your BFF is the same. Bags of fabric, bags and bags, oh my. <laughs> Yeah, it, it'll be anything. I'll just, like, this last fall and winter, I decided I needed to learn how to do epoxy and maybe make some molds and create some stuff. And then I decided to epoxy my bathroom counter, and that was a whole, whole thing. <laughs> um, but still, I haven't entirely wrapped up the details on. It's just terrible. Uh, watched, you know, hours and hours of how-to videos, bought all this stuff, outside of doing the, um, the bathroom counter, I made one mold and one thing, <laughs> and that was it. Just the one thing. And it wasn't very good. So projects in general tend to be that way for me. Keeps things interesting. 
I once taught myself how to code websites. I learned HTML and CSS and I built myself one website. Then I never did anything with it ever again. And now I remember none of it, of course. So, yeah, these, um, these weird rabbit holes where you go and you learn a skill and think this is going to be the thing that I need to know how to do and it's going to change my life. And then no, no, not really. Not so much. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, there's Watson. Hey, you. Scratching out the carpet over there. You snuck in here all quiet. That's my kitty. What am I doing? Which way are these? <sighs> Trying to decipher my drawings. I got it. <laughs> uh. And I have one more leaf over here, I think. Is that the deliberate drawing? I believe it was. We'll go with it. Okay. All right, I'm going to pull out here for the camera and take a look. Oh, that was way out. wondered if I would feel this way. I kind of feel like they should be, should have been bigger, perhaps, but uh, I don't think I need to color them anything. I'm <laughs> Instead of looking at my painting, I'm looking at the uh, computer screen because it like creates this weird um, separation. I feel like I see it better that way, so that's sort of weird. How long have I been dedicating my time to art like this? Well, um, I went to art school a while ago, um, and I didn't have the best experience. I did not leave prepared for anything, and it was like a combination of my fault and some like, um, I think probably some issues with the way that the school had set things up. I think it's changed a lot since then at the school that I was in, um, which would be a good thing if they did. It's uh, when I got out of college, I did some very random jobs for a while. Cause it was just, you know, I have to pay bills and I got a job at a bank and I did random things. And then I eventually, uh, Got a job doing some like marketing and design for a local real estate company. And I decided that, I, cause I majored in illustration. I went and got a continuing education certificate, uh, essentially in specifically design work. And then I worked in design for a lot of years and I would just do art um, on the side, like my art. I would, do creative stuff for people but in companies but um, my own stuff on the side and then I started taking things a little bit more seriously back in probably like 2019 2018 especially like I'd it would always be fits and starts um, where I'd be doing stuff I had some I did some game card illustrations over many years for like Dominion some of them I think at this point I'd look back on and be embarrassed by, honestly, but um, 
I, it was really more recent that I got very serious about wanting to try to do something. And I left my last design job in the beginning of 2020 with the intention that I would do freelance work and um, projects like that. And then with a month after I left that job, the pandemic shutdown happened. It might have been three weeks. It may not even have been an actual month. So everything that I thought that I was going to be doing, everything that I'd planned for kind of vanished. And so I kind of took that time where I was forced to just kind of cool my heels a little bit to really reevaluate what did I, what did I want to do? What did I want to make? What was important to me? And I came through a process of a couple years to this style of working um i decided i was really much more like i do still work for clients and some other random things but i really hope to be able to have my primarily my primary focus on the work that comes from within me um so it's it's been a long time <laughs> that i've been like on and off it's been the last two years, much more seriously and much more focused. Uh, I did a, a lot of the work I did before this was much more uh, illustration styled because that was my background. So a lot of digital work. And that was another thing where like two, two years ago or so, a little more than that, I decided I wanted to get back to doing um, tangible. I wanted tangible things. I wanted to work on things that I could get my hands dirty and see it in front of my face and not just have it be on the computer screen. So that's, that's kind of the journey that got me back here to this, in a nutshell, very simplified journey. Lots of random jobs and lots of random journeys and distractions and uh, speed bumps and all the things. It sounds like your hard work is really paying off. Well, I, I hope so. I mean, I hope to be able to maintain some kind of a living. <laughs> it would be great. Um, I hope to create things that speak to people. Uh, I hope that I can either inspire or encourage or, you know, just contribute to some kind of creative joy in people's lives would be really wonderful. I need to find a pin or something to poke a hole in this guy. I think this is my glue. All right. Old handy compass. We'll just see if I can... I didn't have the lid on right, and it got gummed up. Oh, look at that. There we go. I think that might do it. Maybe. Well enough, at least. Yeah, we'll go with that. This is one of the last pieces to add this mushroom on here. And I was going to put it right around here. And I'll just have to trim off a little bit on the side. I think, is that my spot? I think so. Okay, I'm gonna be smart with my glue application. A handy paper palette here. And I'm gonna use a brush. <laughs> to put the glue, to apply the glue. Ah, a crummy brush. I don't care if it gets screwed up. This glue does wash out pretty easily, so it's not a big problem, but some brushes you just don't want to use for things. Did you ever put glue on your palms as a kid in class and peel it off? I did. <laughs> I definitely did that. And there's a girl in one of my classes that has been wanting to do that. And, oh man, I remember doing it myself. It's, so it's like hard to be like, 
no, don't do that during class time. You only have, you know, two hours to make some art, so let's actually make some art. <laughs> but yes, definitely, I was, I did that. Good old Elmer's glue. <laughs> ah, those were the days. All right, I don't know if I have enough glue on here, but we're going to give it a go. Where was my spot? Mm, well, who? All right. I think that's about the spot. Let's see if I can get that adhered down. This is uh this is on watercolor paper, so it's a little thicker stuff that doesn't adhere as quickly and easily as like thin newsprint or uh, magazine paper. Do it. I'll probably have to check some edges after it dries a bit and see where I need to touch it up. My cat just had shown up for a minute to glare at me and leave the room again. <laughs> All right, so where it's not quite sticking down, we're just gonna. Oh, speak of the devil. Hi. What you doing? You bored? Came in here to yawn at me. <laughs> that is my studio assistant, Watson. Come here. Come here. Oh, I need to show your face. Oh, there he is. He's my little half Abyssinian pain that I love very much. Aren't you? haven't tried to walk through my art yet today, but usually you try to get in front of the camera. Yeah, it's being very chill, <laughs> which is very strange. I'm just going to hang out here for a second. That's not usually your MO. Usually you're like, put me down immediately. I have things to do. This is a guy. Studio assistant says, I hate it, it's terrible, start over. <laughs> right? Nice stinker. All right, you can go on and do your thing. Oh my gosh, I'm covered in paper and glue. Oh, if you're not making a mess, did you even make a thing? This will probably also require something heavy sit on it when it gets a little more um, tacky to get it real flat on the edge there. I believe this is something that I did on some very, very old watercolor paper. So I guess you never really know how it's going to take. So at this point, those were the major things that I knew I wanted to accomplish on this piece. What I'm not sure of is if I want to add anything on top of the mushrooms, and I'm kind of leaning towards not, but I'll probably want to look at it a little bit and think about it. Um, got some oil pastels here. I'm just going to do a little bit of drawing back into here. And they kind of end up just being more texture kind of than anything else, the way that they sit on the paper and on all the other stuff that's on here.
Let's see. Now I have cat hair itching my nose. I feel like some more warm something or another. it in my mind that if I drew some flowers here that I might want to draw something else in another area. Earlier today I was kind of thinking about that. Maybe, maybe I'll go ahead and do that a little bit just to have something balance out that element which is very like fine in detail compared to pretty much anything else I can probably count on my hands how many times I've deliberately drawn flowers I've never been somebody that was interested in And drawing flowers for whatever reason. That's something that I've been thinking about in terms of like just trying to develop some different skills, some different drawing habits, trying things, doing warm-up sketches. I always mean to do warm-up sketches in the beginning of the day. I seem to almost always forget to actually do it. Just get busy with things, you just start whatever. Which isn't the worst thing in the world, but is definitely not what the intention <laughs> was when I initially think about the things that I ought to be doing with my time. enough. Probably. As I continue to draw, <laughs> I say yes, that's enough. And then no, I'm just still, there's still more things here. <sighs> I exhaust myself sometimes. Knowing when to stop 
a thing and to move on is always its own little challenge. I think maybe one more flower and then that will be fine. <laughs> Perhaps. You know, it's kind of subtle. It's fine. Now I'm kind of, again, just looking at anywhere that I'd like to see more or less of anything. And just now this edge here is like kind of bothering me right there for whatever reason, which is really just a part of the leg in shadow, but just right here, it's like not clean enough or something. So maybe I will use pencil and kind of sharpen that along all the way along here so it makes sense I'm gonna need to give all of these a good sharpening pretty soon all these pencils measure maybe a little line over here too anywhere that I have lost a little bit of the sharpness of the line where it sort of bothers me kind of adding that little outline back in Almost afraid to say it, but I think this might just about be done. Although I am almost feel like this is too much of a thing. I have to go continue my day. Thanks again for live streaming and showing how you work. Oh, thank you for joining me, Arosa. Thank you so much, and I hope you have an awesome day and get to do some fun, creative things. Uh, thank you again, and may hopefully I'll see you in another stream. But I think that, yeah, I think that this might be a good wrapping place for me as well, because there will likely be how I generally finish something at this point is I'll kind of just have this in the studio at this point for maybe a week or two, and I'll just be seeing it all the time when I come in and out. And... I will probably come in and like do a little bit of like, ooh, just a little bit of thing here, a little bit of a thing there, a little bit of a thing right here. 
and just do little fusses to it until it's really at the place that I'm happy with. There, I, I'm kind of seeing a couple things here and here that I might make some adjustments on. But I'm kind of kind of let it cook in my head. I'm going to let that stew simmer <laughs> and just do its thing. And uh, we'll make that decision a little later and I will show it on, um, like as, if I do much more to change it, I'll of course throw it up on here and show it up during another stream. Um, in the meanwhile, I will be working on something else, either new, maybe a new thing, we'll see, on Thursday morning. Pick up the live stream session again, paint and chat, and uh, hang out and do some creative things. That will be 10 a.m. Central Time on Thursday. Yes, on Thursday. <laughs> All right, I hope to see everyone then and have a fantastic rest of your day, evening, whatever you have. <laughs> and thanks so much. Thanks, 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 and good night. Bye.